today's workshop guide we're going to be taking a look at brakes for Discovery 3 and 4 and as always we're joined uh, by Rich from MM. Hi Rich, how are you doing? I'm alright, thank you. You? Good, thanks, good. So, so we've got in front of us here uh, a used and a brand new set of front discs and pads. Uh, well, we can see there's some differences. Do you want to run through what some of the differences between this, this worn out set and this good set are? Well, first of all, obviously you can see it's corrosion. We've got corrosion build up in the areas that haven't been touching the pad. Uh, and then there's the wear, uh, you know, with the grooves that you can feel in the disc, and obviously the wear in the actual physical thickness of the disc. And then again, the pads wear. You can see there's a big difference between the two sets of pads there. So if we're driving around with, with these duff set of discs and pads on our vehicle, how would we know that we need to change them? Well, the vehicle does have a warning system on it, um, so a light will come on the dashboard to tell you if the, the pads have worn down. Um, but that sometimes doesn't always work. So if that doesn't work, what you'll feel is that perhaps the, the, the bite isn't going to be as good as it should be. Um, the vehicle may pull one side or the other uh, if one of the pads is completely worn away. And then at the very worst, you're going to start to physically hear them uh, when, the, when the pad surface wears away completely. Um, you'll be just pressing this metal plate against the disc, which makes a horrendous noise. So today we're changing the discs and the pads, mm -hmm. but that's not always the case. No, no, um, normally you'll, you'll change uh, maybe a couple of sets of pads um, to a disc. Um, so, you know, you might have a new set of discs and pads, and then after a few, you know, thousand miles, you may need another set of pads uh, and, and retain the, the original disc. But then obviously the disc at some point will need changing. And you should always change, if you're going to change the disc, you should always put new pads in at the same time. Not, not you know, you can put old pads on, on uh, sorry, new pads on a, an old disc, but you can't put old pads on a new disc, it's just, it's just false economy. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so these ones we're changing here, these ones look pretty badly worn. Now we know that the, the thickness of a, of a brand new pad is about 30 millimetres. Yeah. And we're taking the Land Rover recommended service specs to say that if this is 5 mil thinner, or, or in fact it's 3 mil thinner, so if this becomes 27 mil, we're going to change them. Yeah. Um, on this one, that's clearly the case. Uh, just in a layman's way, if you're, if you're wondering about your own discs, is there a way that we can just check, maybe run our fingers across or something? Yeah, I mean, the, one of the best ways of checking, a lot of cars have got spoked wheels, you can see your discs through the wheel. Um, if they look rusty, if, if, there's, a, if there's an area of the, of the disc that isn't being used and you can see corrosion on it, that's not a good sign they need changing. If there's, if there's bad scoring that you, could, you can see and physically feel, but obviously not when you've been down the road because you'll burn your fingers, but uh, you can feel uh, you know, grooves in, in the disc, which again is bad. Um, and then there's the obvious lips either side of the, you know, of the, of the area that's being rubbed. Uh, and again, you can feel those ridges either side of there quite, quite badly. Sure. So, so on this particular one, we're, we're about shot on here, and if we use our, our measuring device, uh, we can see that it, we're about two and a half mil down on there. So yeah. if we take the same off both sides, we're about five mil. Yeah, off these, the these are quite fitness. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. And again, the pads you can see are, 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 are way past their yeah. best. Yeah. So if we if, if we want to go ahead and get these bad discs and pads swapped out for these new ones, and uh, we'll see how it's done. Okay. For Discovery 3 discs, there are a lot of variations. If you download the BearMac app, available now from the App Store, it will guide you through each and every different variation on that. For brake pads, it's a much simpler affair. One size fits all. We try to check the brake level because if the pads have been wearing and the brake level has been topped up, um, when you push the pistons back on the uh, calipers, the brake level could rise to a point where it's going to overflow and spray inside the, uh, the engine bay here. So we're going to remove this panel, which is held down by two clips, one here and one there, which will expose the master cylinder. And then you can see the levels here. And if the level's too high, when we push the pads back, it's going to go, it's going to overflow. So we'd need to syringe some of that fluid out of there to stop that happening. If the fluid hasn't been checked as the pads have been wearing, then the fluid level will be low. So when you put the new pads in and push the pistons back, it should bring the level up to the correct mark. And obviously, after you've done that, check the level, make sure it's okay, road test the car, and then just double check the level again after you've bed the brakes in. In order to access the brakes, the wheels need to come off. 
We're just looking at the front here, which will need servicing more regularly than the rear. As always, when removing a wheel, crack the nuts loose before you lift the vehicle. And on a discovery, you'll need to find out the ever-elusive locking wheel nut. Once the wheel has been safely removed, we'll need to unplug the brake sensor cable. These often break, so we recommend replacing it if it feels a bit brittle or if the end comes off. Next up, we'll need to undo the actual brake caliper. Next up, we need to remove the brake caliper. Now the bolts are quite hard to see, but they are 12 spline bolts. Normal socket sets may come with a 6 spline ratchet set and can round off fairly easily. So we do recommend having the right tool for the job. You'll also need a spanner here to stop the caliper slides from spinning around. Once the caliper is off, we've used a bent coat hanger, but you can use a cable tie to hang the caliper up out of the way. This ensures that we're not placing too much stress on the brake pipes. They're fairly fragile and can break easily. If you're just replacing the pads at this point, you can forego this next step. But because we're replacing the discs, we'll need to take the caliper sled off also. This enables us to access the disc. It's always worth checking the pad carrier once this is removed. The threads in here can corrode. If the threads look worn, or the bolts that come out look a bit chewed up, then we'll replace it. After that, we're going to need a T6 torque. There's just one bolt holding the actual disc onto the hub. This should come free at this point. If it doesn't, a light tap with a mallet will do the job. Now we're ready to fit the new discs. When we buy new discs, they do come with a grease cover over them. I guess this stops them from rusting, but this will need to come off, otherwise we'll have no brakes at all. Brake cleaner or white spirit sprayed onto the disc will remove all excess grease. To fit the new disc is much like taking the old disc off. We slide the disc on, ensuring that the hole that the torque screw came out of is lined up. Tightening up the torque screw will require 12 foot-pound of torque. Next up, the pad carrier can go back into position. Ensure that the bolts and the threads are clear, and if you wish, apply some Loctite, but don't put grease on. Once the carrier is on, we can replace the pads. Once the pads are on, and they just slide into place here, we can replace the caliper. It may be the case that the pots on the caliper are sticking out too far, so it appears that they won't go on. You should be able to, with a bit of persuasion, push these back by hand. When we're ready to tighten the nuts on the caliper and the pad carrier, we're going to use about 55 foot-pound of torque. Then we'll need to just reattach the sensor wire. We're now ready to refit the wheel in the same way as we took it off and do the other side. On the front, the other side, the operation is exactly the same. However, when we've finished doing our brakes, we must be aware that they actually aren't going to work very well for a while. The next thing we need to do is pump the the, the pistons back into the pads and the pads against the discs because if we don't do that the first thing that's going to happen when we drive away is your foot's going to go to the floor taking that free play up and then you're not going to have any brakes and you could crash the car so it's really important to pump the pedal up before you road test the vehicle. Okay what we need to do is, is um, drive steady don't apply the brake heavily to start with um, when we do apply it, apply it gently for no more than three seconds at a time, leaving enough time for the brakes to cool between each time we press the brake pedal, and then just pressing it a bit firmer for three seconds each time we do it until you'll feel the brakes to start to work, because initially the brakes will be quite poor because they're new uh, and shiny, so they need to be obviously bed in, and then as we go through that procedure you'll feel the brakes working more and more as we go.